WoW's dock is secret. Do I know about it? Ominous. Very ominous. You need to play FF9. Apparently, I do need to play FF9. And 7, and 8, and 10. Not 11, though. What am I watching? 7? I'm going to start this off by saying whatever the hell you do, do not look in the comment section below. Though I don't usually get many, if any, comments on my productions, oh. the ones that are there will no doubt spoil what is to come. You need to saw a glue so cap. go into full screen mode and let me show you this, because I promise you, it's going to blow your mind. Okay. I believe I've made a wow discovery that literally no one else has ever found. No matter how much I try to look it up, there's never It better not be about results. ducks. No duck duck searches, no YouTube videos, nothing. It better not be and about ducks. pretty damn surprising, considering this is a game from 2004 that we're talking about here. This is the vanilla WoW world map. As you can see, there's only two continents, Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor. Let me ask you a question. Out of all the zones in these two continents, which one is the most forgettable? Both. I I'll always get them mixed up. To think about it. Yeah, both. I am, I am genuinely, after like playing this game for like 15 years, I do not know which one is Kalimdor and which one is the Eastern Kingdoms in terms of like locations. <laughs> like what's <where? laughs> I genuinely like don't know. <laughs> Eastern Kingdoms, if I was to guess, because it's on the east. And I feel like that's where Ironforge and Arathi Highlands is, and the Twilight Highlands, and Gurubashi wow. is over there. And on the left is Silithus and whatnot. But when he says, what's the most forgettable zone? Uh, what's the most forgettable zone in World of Warcraft? <sighs> A lot of people say Desolus, but I love Desolus. The most forgettable zone. Uh, uh, not the Hinterlands. Hinterlands is awesome. Uh, I'm going to go with what the popular vote probably is and say Desolus, but it might be like Stone Town Mountains, maybe. Or it could be that island. There is an island off the coast where you get the kicking chimera chops. It could be that place. All right, time's up. I imagine that the vast majority of people probably yeah, answered concerts. with Desolus, Silithus, yeah. Alterac Mountains, Deadwind Pass, you know, the usual stuff. Deadwind suspects. Pass isn't forgettable. But there's one zone in Vanilla WoW that literally everyone knows about, but is almost universally forgotten. And that zone is Stone Talon Mountains. I guess that! Stone Talon Mountains is I a win. contested zone that shares a border with the Barrens and Desolus. The fact that it's a contested zone I'm is smart. quite interesting in of itself, as despite there being many low-level horde quests... I also wouldn't say it was forgettable. There's some badass shit in Stone Talon Mountains. I don't like the run back to turn the quests in, but the uh, the things at the top are really cool. I do like the goblin area as well, where you have to fight all the mechs. I thought that was pretty yeah. good. For Alliance players, there's almost nothing at all. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that if you're an Who Alliance plays Alliance like though, me, right? you've probably never even been here before. The zone itself has an extremely unusual design, and there really is nothing else like it in the game. It's essentially one giant valley that connects to three different open chasms that are completely different to one another. Due to the zone's odd layout and frustrating quests, yeah, many quests are frustrating for sure. To skip it entirely. No, but I always do stone talent maps. I'm not here to talk about the zone <laughs> or even its quests. Memory lane. I got my first set of shoulders in Stone Talon Mountains. All the way back. I was so proud of myself. I filled my shoulder slot in Stone Talon Mountains. It was a good day. But something much, much weirder. We all know that WoW has a day-night cycle that is in sync with the server's time zone. If it's daytime in real life, then it will be daytime in game two. If it's nighttime in real life, then it will be nighttime in game two. Didn't know the that. The zone's atmosphere can change significantly depending on whether it's day or night, but this is true especially 
for Didn't Stone Talon Mountains. I thought it just changed During randomly. The game, Stone Talon Mountains <laughs> just looks and feels like a pretty typical looking place. A bit of trees here, a bit of grass there. But at night, this zone and the way it feels to be in it almost completely changes. Does it? From the hours of midnight to 5 a.m., music no longer plays in the zone. Instead, all you can hear is this strange wind ambience that sounds really freaky. They come from the big spider area? What's weirder is that at night, the entire zone has this creepy red tint to it for seemingly no reason. And there's a ton of fog that limits how far you can see. Hmm. Not sure if you can really notice it here, but the difference when it's daytime is really, well, night and day. Now obviously, when I first discovered this, I was confused just as much as you probably are. Why is it like this? No other zone has effects like these at night. It just seems... weird. I... Everybody know This is why Stone Town's Mountains is not forgettable, because everybody knows about Booby Hill. Are. Why is it like right? this? No other... Everybody knows Booby Hill, because they put a, a node on it that looks like a nipple. Like, everybody I ever played with back in the day knows about Booby Hill and Stone Town Mountain. It's a tit. This is a fucking breast. That's what that is. And they did that intentionally. And we, I, I would always say, well, I'm near Booby Hill when I was leveling with friends here. I met people on Booby Hill. The zone has effects like these at night. It just seems weird. And again, no matter how much I Less looked into three. it, no one had an answer. But that's not even why I'm making this. Because, yeah, it's weird. But it could just be some sort of attempt at atmospheric immersion. No, I'm making this because of a strange phenomenon that kept happening to my character here. If you know me, then you'll know that I'm pretty much nocturnal. As in, seriously nocturnal. I'm YouTuber? always up at night okay. and in the early hours of the morning because that's just how I like it. As a result, whenever I play WoW, it's always in the dark. That's how I noticed how weird Stone Talon Mountains was in the first place. In classic WoW, I had an orc warrior called Warzerk that I would occasionally level up to see what the horde side Warzirk. of the game was like. <laughs> Just a way to relax and see what I would have otherwise missed out on on my alliance Warzirk. main. Stone Talon Mountains was one of the zones I ended up leveling in. I remember being taken aback at what a weird, almost psychedelic dreamscape the zone felt like. It reminded me of Snow somewhere where Spencer. a nightmare would take place, but Again, I didn't think anything of it until this happened. This is a screenshot I took at 2.14 a.m. on the 20th of October 2020. I'm in the Windshear Crag part of the zone and as you can see, my character is dead. You're probably thinking that a mob must have got me or something, but no. The reason I took this screenshot is because my character just died instantly for no reason whatsoever. I was just running around doing some quest when he just dropped dead. At first I thought that maybe a high level rogue had got me then vanished or something but I didn't see any and according combat to my log? combat log nothing happened. He just died. I kept this screenshot because I thought I would Proof put it of in combat a log? production of mine as at the time there was a lot of uproar about how badly Blizzard maintained classic WoW with there being a ton of bots and gold sellers flying around. I figured it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for there to be bugs like this too, as, after all, this is Blizzard we're talking about here. Oh. I, I rezzed up and carried on with my- You're backpedaling, son. I can't take you seriously. You've ruined the whole video for me, because you, you're, you're clearly shit. <clears throat> this has ruined everything. Questing before- Oh, stop! I beg of you. heading off for the night. 24 hours later, and I am, once again, questing in the Windshear Crag. Everything was going smoothly. Took you longer than a day to do Stone Talon? Bam. It's because it you're backpedaling. Again. It's because you're backpedaling. death, no combat log, just dead. I had never experienced anything quite like this. I mean, yeah, WoW could be buggy, but it's never been this bad. I I'm checking your key bindings now. Slam on six, Sunder on seven, Execute on eight. No bandages bound. Mm. Oh, have you not bound your stances? I looked back at the screenshot I took the night before and noticed something really unusual. The time of death on both shots. Ah! 
Uh, uh, you have bound the stances, but you've also added them to the bar again, even though they're there. But why? But why? Be buggy, but it's never been this bad. I looked back at the screenshot I took the night before and noticed something really unusual. The time of death on both shots was exactly the same. 2.14am. Mm. That was just way too much of a coincidence to ignore. Interesting. I tried to make a post on r slash classic wow to ask if anyone knew what kept happening to my character, but it got removed and then I was banned for no reason. <laughs> most realistic thing I've seen so far. <laughs> That's the most realistic thing I've seen so far. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, no, ban. So, yeah, pretty standard. That's my Reddit mod impression. This was way too much of a coincidence to ignore. So, I conjured a plan. The next night, at 2.14 a.m., I would have my recorder on, just in case my character died again, okay. so that I would have proof of this weird bug in action. The following is what I captured. I'm actually anticipating it. Nothing. I waited around for a few minutes longer, but it just wasn't happening. I figured that it really must have been just a weird coincidence. Feeling disappointed, I turned off my recorder and carried on questing. But this then, is the most blue ball shit. Boom. It happened again. This time <laughs> at 2.47 a.m. Three deaths in a row on three different days but why was this one at a different time than the others? The only difference I noticed between the last shot and the first two is that on the last one, I was at the charred veil part of the zone, whereas with the first two, I was in the Windshear Crag. They should come up with some technology that allows you to uh, record the previous five minutes of gameplay, if you even if you hit forgot to hit the record button. And they should bundle that into the most popular graphics hardware in the world so that you can just get it. They should do that. Right, Chris, you think that'd be pretty sick. So, I had another idea. What if I went to the Windshear Crag at 2.14am and had my recorder on then instead? Maybe there, it would happen again. So, once again, I set my character there and waited. What is this? Holy shit. Interesting. I now had video evidence of this so-called bug in action. But honestly, at this point, I was starting to think there has to be something more to this. Out of curiosity, I wondered that if I went to the Charred Vale at 2.47 again, if it would happen there too. Sure Is it a enough, zone reset? It did. But if this happened, people would know. If this happened, like, from day one, people would know. Unless it's a classic only thing. Bushes, it's slash day. Get hype. 2.14 a.m. in the Windshear Crag and 2.47 a.m. in the Charred Vale. Hi, I didn't know what it was, but for some reason, at those times, my character would always just drop dead. It was as if there was an invisible GM playing some sort of practical joke or something like huh. that. But... Alright, you've got my attention. Yet. At the very top of the zone lies the third chasm, the Stone Talon Peak. A very leafy and soothing place compared to the other two. I wondered if the weird deaths occurred there too. Sure enough, they did. 2.28 a.m. I tested this again the next day, and it happened yet again. 2.14 a.m. in the Windshear Crag. 2.47 a.m. in the Charred Vale. 2.28 in the Stone Talon Peak. Every night, at those times, my character would die without failure or Have you got a friend? It would never happen in the valley part of the zone, only in the Need a friend at those exact times. 
This wasn't a coincidence at this point. I tried to see if anyone else was in the zone at the same time as me, but literally no one ever was. Not too surprising, as this character is on Dragonfang, which is, yeah, a very dead server. <laughs> it's retail, wow. Least. None of my friends still played, so I Oh, F. Oh, unlucky. ...to get a subscription just to test this. Oh, unlucky. And whenever I would ask other people to come to Stone Talon Mountain so that I could watch them drop dead, they were surprisingly uncooperative. I decided Fuck to do some hardcore <laughs> research to see if anyone else You can't get one this, friend? Oh my almost god. almost the entire internet for even a nugget of information. But alas, nothing. Well, nothing. Except that two years ago, back when Classic WoW launched, an old Blizzard developer who had long since left the company, Mike Crond, did a Q&A on the r slash WoW subreddit, whereby he answered people's questions about what it was like developing the vanilla game. In his opening remarks, he mentioned that he was behind zones such as Desolus, Feralas, Ashenvale, and Stone Talon Mountains. Despite the Q&A being two years ago now, I noticed that Mike was very active on Reddit, albeit almost always posting about non-WoW-related stuff. Now, I'm not usually one to pry, but man, if anyone knew what was going on here, it would be this guy. And I'm in way too- Be deep. careful with this. I want- I love Celestalon, and we get along well. But I once DM'd Celestalon to ask about something about priests in pre-vanilla, and he blocked me. <laughs> I've I'd met him at all sorts, we'd had chats, he'd fucking run around drunk, blowing on my bald spot. He did all that, I was like, hey man. Can you, can you just confirm something for me? I was asking about uh, disciplined priests. Originally, were supposed to be tanks, right? In World of Warcraft. Uh, but I needed a source. So I, like, DM'd him about it. He just fucking blocked me or unfollowed me so I couldn't talk to him anymore. I was like, well, there it is. To okay. I Thanks, just man. had to ask. <clears throat> so I did. Now, I'm going to be honest. I had no idea how to open a conversation with a guy who I don't know and who doesn't <laughs> know me. I'm not a journalist. I'm a wild player. Oh, that's a Reddit thing, isn't it? This is the start of a beautiful thing. Say something nice or share a cat fact. Is that what Reddit says when you send a DM? I've never sent a Reddit DM. Hey. Is this is that what it says? Share a cat. This is how it recommends that humans open conversation. Did you know cats nature, are the worst pet? I'm very antisocial and tend not to talk to people unless they talk to me. But this guy wasn't just going to talk to me by himself. So I decided to try to play it cool. Didn't want to come off as too pushy or anything like that. So I said, Hey there, is it true you worked on Vanilla WoW back in the day? So, Honestly, so. Honestly, I didn't expect to get an answer. But shockingly enough, he responded almost instantly. Yup. Well, it's better than nothing, I guess. The ice was broken. I just had a question about <laughs> one of the zones. Nothing serious. Just some trivia that I wondered if you could answer. Two minutes later... Shoot. Talkative guy. Gangster! I've been on Classic WoW recently and leveling up in Stone Talon Mountains. I've noticed that for some reason, my character dies at set times in the early hours of the morning for seemingly no reason. I know it sounds bonkers, but do you have any idea why that is? It's been driving me crazy for days now. After I asked this, the guy just went completely silent. Ooh, I'll be honest, ominous. I was pretty pissed off. If anyone would know why, it would be this guy. I was and he just off. bailed on me for no reason. I, I figured that all off. hope was lost and that I'd never know what was behind this. And with my limited audience, there was no way I could make a big enough deal out of it to try to get people to figure it out. So, case closed, I guess. Or so, I thought. <clears throat> I am not joking with you. Ten months later what I get another message from my ten, how long have you been working on this 10 months what the fuck <laughs> 10 months later <laughs> message literally just said the socal lady killer i'm like what no response the southern Guy just socal so completely quiet again the socal lady killer what socal lady that? killer I thought that perhaps he had meant to message someone else, and this was sent to me by accident. Decided to look into it, and this is what came up. The so-called lady killer is the nickname given to an unidentified serial killer 
who is believed to be Love behind you, the murder of three women Love you too, in Southern buddy. California throughout the years of 1995 and 1996. Though there is no direct evidence that links the three murders together, the modus operandi of the killer was seemingly identical in all of the cases, with the victims' bodies being mutilated in an almost identical fashion each time. The three women, all of which were prostitutes, were believed to be lured to a secluded area by the killer, whereby they were then murdered. Again, I had no idea what this had to do with what I asked. Until God, my puzzle brain is kicking in now. Do times have a factor? Do the times equate to dates or something? I can't. I'm buying yeah, into this not. now. I'm full X Files and Mulder and Scully. The first year old Whitney Fangson. On the 2nd of August 1995, her body was found on the outskirts of the wind shear lumber mill. Police reports state that she was officially declared dead at 2 No fucking way! Four months later, on the 5th of December 1995, 25 year old Sophie Riven was found in an almost identical state at a hotel room in the nearby village of Los Chared. Police reports state that she was declared dead at 2.47 a.m. The first I am mind blown! ...was 32 year old Amy Rassan, who two months later on the 17th of February 1996 was found dead by climbers at the base of Sockle Peak. Police reports state that she was declared dead at 2.28 a.m. This better not be bullshit, because this is really cool. Lumber mill was the basis for Windshear Crag. Lost Chared was the basis for the Chard Vale. Sockle Peak was the basis for Stone Talon Peak. In addition, the timing of the victim's deaths correlates exactly with the timing of my characters. The mystery had been solved. The seemingly random deaths are an easter egg referencing the SoCal Lady Killer. But... But no one's ever noticed a this? Pretty weird easter egg, don't you think? I went to ask Mike what on earth made him want to add that in the game. But again, I got no response. But this time, it was different. You see, in the past when I was blanked, like 13 Mike months. was still actively using Reddit obsessively on a daily basis. But ever since that last message, he had stopped completely. Not many people know this, but the state of California actually has an online public database of all its residents that states basic information about them, such as Why? their criminal record, driving viability. Wait, what? Ad address, criminal record, employment, driving license, car insurance, health insurance, marital status? Why? And yes, whether they are dead or alive. Well, you're never going to believe what I found. Michael John Crond, 54, death by suicide. On the 13th of August, 2021. What? The exact same day that he last messaged me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Crond, World of Warcraft developer from 2004 to 2006, was the SoCal Lady Killer. What is happening? Is this real? Stone Talon Mountains, a zone which he designed, is nothing more than a direct reference to the crimes There's he no way. 10 years this is bollocks. prior to joining Blizzard. It is an open mockery of his victims, hiding the truth in plain sight while taking great pleasure in how no one else can see it. Typical serial killer behavior. But if you aren't convinced yet, then I'm let not. me show you this. Okay. Every single chasm has a rare mob that is a direct reference to one of the victims. No! Whitney Fangson died outside of the Windshear lumber mill. Meanwhile, in the Windshear Crag, there's an NPC called Taskmaster Whipfang. Sophie Riven died in Lost Chared. Meanwhile, in the Charred Vale, there's an NPC called Sister Riven. Amy Rassan died on the base of Sockle Peak. Meanwhile, in the Stone Talon Peak, there's an NPC called Sentinel Amma Rassan. The cherry on top. In the only safe place in the entire zone, the Sunrock Retreat, 
is an NPC called Krond. Krond, the Butcher. There's no fucking way, right? Are you seeing this, Chris? There's no fucking way. I don't know, man. This feels like some fucking magic shit. So the question you're probably asking yourself is... They would have changed why? it if this was true, why right? Why he commit suicide? Well, the answer becomes crystal clear if we go back to the SoCal Lady Killer's wiki page. It reads, After being a cold case for over 25 years, on the 2nd of August 2021, LAPD Police Chief Ed Jens announced that the SoCal Lady Killer case had been reopened due to advances in forensic technology that may help finally bring the victim some justice. Mike Crond knew that I he was to about believe. to be found out. <laughs> Thus, he ended his own life as to escape justice. Right? But folks, do you want to know the worst part about this? It gets this? worse? Say it's a lie. The worst part is... I just made all that up. Yeah, there's That's no right. way. Mike Crond is not a serial killer. In fact, Mike Crond isn't even real. Hell, his picture isn't even real. It was generated by an AI. There's no such thing as the SoCal Lady Killer. That was a good story. Didn't even die randomly in the Stone Talon Mountains. I just got a friend of mine to use the neutral auction house to trade me a dark rune. Hell, even the character isn't even the same. So, the question you must be asking is, why? Why did I make up this entire story? So we watch it? Well, you see, it's simple. If I can come up with an interesting and somewhat believable story that grips people enough to keep them listening for 20 minutes, about the pissing stone talon mountains, no less, then Blizzard has no excuse to not write a good story alone. <laughs> Especially with their ridiculously overpaid writing team at their disposal. Dear Wild team, get it together, you absolute amateurs. <laughs> oh, 10 out of 10. 10 out of fucking 10. Ah, GG, dude. GG. That's fantastic. All right, you get a like for that. Yeah, that's good shit. <laughs> that is good shit. Oh, that's funny as fuck. That's a good ending. Get your act together, you fucking clowns. <laughs> uh, that was really cool. There's a lot of holes in it, unfortunately. And if that would have been a story written for a video game, you would have been in trouble. You would have been in trouble. Because you'd be like, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. But that was great. That was really fucking cool. That was.